Hello, my name is Patrick Boyle. Welcome to my video. Today we're going to learn about delta hedging a call option. So delta hedging, I've got a, a whole video on what delta is if you want to watch that and I have a whole playlist on the Greek so I'll, I'll link to both of those. Um, but delta hedging refers to trading in the underlying asset alongside your options position with the goal of remaining delta neutral. So in our example, we're going to say that we are long a call option uh, that has a delta of 0.5. So if this call option covers 100 shares of the underlying, um, that means that we have a risk exposure uh, as if we were long 50 shares by owning this call option. So suppose our trader is worried about the price of the underlying falling in value, uh, which would mean that our call option would fall in value. Uh, they might sell 50 shares of the underlying against this option in order to be delta neutral. Now once we're delta neutral, for small rises and falls in the price of the underlying, we wouldn't expect to really have any really large gains or losses on our portfolio. We're, we're hedged. So, the graphic up on the screen right now is showing you long a call option, short 0.5 shares times the number of shares that's covered by that call option, so short 50 shares, and that gets us delta neutral. This is an at the money call, so the strike and the spot are at the same level. So anyhow, no sooner have we hedged ourselves than the price of the underlying rises. So the first thing that we do, the first thing we always do when we're delta hedging is just recalculate our delta. So we calculate our delta again, and we now find that this new price of the underlying, that the delta is now 0.6. Now we're short 50 shares, but we need to be now short 60 shares. So what our trader does is they sell another 10 shares. And once again, we're delta neutral. So this is all we're doing. As the price is rising, we're gonna find ourselves selling shares. And as the price is falling, we're gonna find ourselves buying them back. So let's see what happens next. Um, so the next, next thing that happens is that the price falls, and in fact it falls right back to where it started. It, it's back to, uh, to the strike price of the option. Now we calculate our delta, and once again we find that our delta is 0.5. So in order to be hedged, we need at this point to be 0.5 times 100 shares of, of the underlying short. So what we have to do is we have to buy back 10 shares of the underlying in order to be delta neutral again. So we do that. And, and that's going to continue on. As the price rises, we're going to be selling. As the price falls, we're going to be buying. And this is just a, the natural thing that happens because that's how the delta is going to change for this option. So let's think a little bit about this. Now we'll imagine if not very much time passed, we'll imagine this rise and fall in the price of the underlying happened in a couple of minutes. And what happened for us? Well, we got delta neutral, and as soon as the price rose, we found ourselves selling 10 shares. And when the price fell back to where it started, we bought those 10 shares back. So overall, our option is actually gonna be worth about the same, right? Because it's a 0.5 delta, it's an at the money call option. Uh, it's at the same price it was at when we initiated this position. No real time has passed. So we'll neither have made nor lost money on our option, but interestingly enough, we seem to have made a little bit of money with our hedging there, right? Because when the price rose, we saw, sold 10 shares, and when the price fell, we bought those 10 shares back. Now, we won't have made a fortune on that, but we'll have made a little bit of money. And that's kind of an interesting thing. So let's look at what happens next. So the next thing that happens is the price of the underlying falls and we recalculate our delta once again that's what we're we're doing in today's class is recalculating deltas a lot so we recalculate our delta and now the delta is 0.4 so let's think what do we have to do well we're we're short 50 shares of the underlying but we're meant to be short 0.4 times 100 so we're actually only meant to be short 40 shares of the underlying so what we have to do is buy back 10 shares of our short position in order now to have a short position of 40 shares so we're now short 40 shares once again what happens next the price rises okay it goes back to where we started and so what do we have to do we've just bought 
10 shares and it goes back to where it started the delta is back at 0.5 so we have to sell that additional 10 shares so as you can see when it rises we're selling shares and when it falls we're buying shares and when it goes back to the center we're back to around this 50 share thing so it should start to be obvious to you that all of this hedging it's making us little drips and drabs of money so why is that happening and why is that interesting well positions only remain delta hedged for short periods of time and when the price stays within a fairly tight range each time the underlying share price moves our trader has to rebalance the shares hedge in order to remain delta neutral now options are an aggregation of various risks we've got we're exposed to movements in the price of the underlying we're exposed to implied volatility we're exposed to interest rate we're exposed to implied dividends a, a bunch of other little risks like that but you know our main risk with an option initially is we're, we're exposed to changes in the price of the underlying now when we're delta hedging we, we've hedged out that risk so we're no longer really exposed to that but we do have to rebalance whenever the price moves so what that means is that we're exposed to volatility the more the underlying moves the more we have to hedge now as you can see in this example the more it moves the more we hedge and when we're hedging we seem to be making money there seem to be little profits being generated by this hedge and this is because we are long a call option and when you're long a call option or when you're long any option if you're long a call or long a put you're long volatility so we are long volatility and thus the more the price of the underlying moves that means the more volatile the underlying is the more we find ourselves having to hedge and the more that we have to hedge the more money we're generating in in our hedging profits but from from selling high and buying low or from buying low and selling high so that's something that's happening now is this is this just totally free profit are we just able to do this and, and profit for for nothing no because we of course paid for this option right so we paid premium for this option so we wrote a, a check and and bought this option okay and the amount of money we paid in premium is of course initially at least greater than the amount of money we're making back with our hedging now should the underlying move by the amount that was implied in the implied volatility uh, when we bought we would probably make back all of the money that we had spent in premium in our volatility hedging if it moved less than expected when we were long volatility and it didn't move enough and therefore we would lose money or at least we wouldn't make back all of the premium we spent and of course if it moves more than than was implied in the implied volatility well then our hedging is making more money than we spent on premium so that is what it means to be trading volatility we are long volatility and we're making money the more volatile the underlying is because every time it moves a reasonable amount we get to hedge and when we hedge it seems to make us a little bit of money so that is delta hedging that's kind of how we try and extract profits from delta hedging so if you trade options only to take a view on the market's implied volatility levels you must delta hedge so that's why we do this is that our goal with this option was not to trade based upon our belief that the underlying would move to a certain level we weren't trading directionally we're putting on a delta neutral trade with the goal of making money based on the volatility so in order to do that we have to get rid of our exposure to the price of the underlying by hedging and then once we're de delta hedging we have to periodically re-hedge in order to flatten out our exposure if we're long volatility we'll make money in that hedging and if we're short volatility we will lose money in that hedging so let's move on to another example we're gonna we've just looked at a long volatility example where we were long a call option let's now look at a delta neutral uh, trader and we're gonna or a volatility traders we'll call them and we're gonna compare 
their trading to the trading of a person who is a directional trader. Now we know how a directional trader makes money. They buy an option and if the price moves in their favor they make money and if it doesn't they don't make money or they, they lose money on, based on the premium they spend. But let's see how a volatility trader is going to make money here. So we've got our two traders. We've got a directional trader in, in the graphics. I'm going to call that person DT for a directional trader. And then we've got our volatility trader that we'll call VT for volatility trader. And so our directional trader buys an option and our volatility trader sells that option to them. Now, of course, our volatility trader will only sell that option. They, they don't have a view on the direction, but they do have a view on the volatility. So our volatility trader is only going to sell that option if they feel they'll be adequately compensated in terms of implied volatility. So they'll only sell what they consider richly priced options and they'll then delta hedge that until maturity hoping to earn a profit in the manner we described earlier. So let's look at how each party could make or lose money in this example. So our directional trader DT buys a thousand puts and is bearish, right? If you buy a put, you're hoping, at least if you're a directional trader and you buy a put, you're hoping that the price of the underlying will fall and that you'll make money from that fall in the price of the underlying. So our directional trader is bearish. Our volatility trader sells those puts to our directional trader, but they don't actually have an opinion on the direction. They just have an opinion on the volatility. They're neutral on the price of the underlying. So they are going to quickly calculate their delta and they're going to hedge that out. So in this example, um, our directional traders long a thousand puts, we'll say they spent a dollar on them. Our volatility traders short those thousand puts. They calculate the delta and find that it is minus 0.3. And so they sell 300 shares short in order to hedge their exposure to the price of the underlying. So, and in our example here, the underlying is trading at 20 when all of these positions were put on. So let's see what happens next. Well, the first thing that happens is the price of the underlying falls. Now, our directional trader, of course, is happy about this, right? Because they, they bought a put option, they profit from a fall in the price of the underlying. So they're happy to see the price of the underlying fall. And they're going to make some money based upon that. Now, our volatility trader is hedged, so they, they don't necessarily care about this. And for small moves, you know, this is a 1% fall. Um, you know, roughly speaking, our volatility trader will neither have gained nor lost money on the portfolio. Now, they'll, of course, have lost money on the option, but they'll have made the same amount of money, roughly speaking, on the 300 shares that they were short. Now, what they have to do next is what our volatility traders are always doing. They have to recalculate their delta, okay? So our volatility trader quickly recalculates their delta and they find that now with this lower price, the delta of this put option is minus 0.4. Now they're only short 300 shares, but they should now be short 400 shares. So they're gonna have to sell an additional 100 shares in order to be hedged. If they don't do this, they are exposed to the directional risk, the price risk of the, the underlying stock. So they're gonna do this and they're hedged again. So what happens next? Well, the price of the underlying now rises by 2%. So that's, that's an, a, you know, a decent rise in the price of the underlying. Unfortunately for a directional trader, it's a rise and they were long a put option. So they're losing money on this move. Our volatility trader is hedged but of course, you know, this is a, a sizable enough move. So the next step for our volatility trader is to recalculate their delta so that they can adjust their hedge and make sure that they are still adequately hedged. Once, Because if this move were to continue on, uh, they could start losing money. So our volatility trader cal calculates the, the delta of this option and now it is minus 0.2. So our volatility trader, of course, has to hedge and so they buy back 200 shares of their short and now they are short 200 shares right because before they were short 400 they bought back 200 now they're just short 200 shares so as you can see here um, the price as the price of the underlying is moving our volatility trader isn't really making or losing 
significant sums in the overall portfolio, but they, they do have to rehedge. Now you'll notice a difference in this rehedging to the rehedging that was happening the last time. Because if we look back here, we see that when we started out with a delta of 0.3 and we were short 300 shares, and the price, uh, the price fell, um, we had to sell more. And when the price rose, we had to buy them back. So in this case, we seem to always be selling low and buying high, which is, you know, not making us money. It's, it's costing us money. We're losing money. So why, why are we losing money every time we hedge now when we were making money every time we hedged in our prior example? Well, the reason for this is because in the prior example, we were long volatility, and so our hedging made us back the money we had spent in premium. In this example, we are short volatility. We sold those put options. So as the price moves, the more volatile it is, the more it moves, the more we have to hedge, and the more we hedge, the more money we lose. And so basically what's happening is we received premium to begin with. As the price moves around, we're losing money, and if the price of the underlying moved around uh, in line with the implied volatility, in line with market expect expectations, we would lose the entire amount of money in our hedging that we had brought in in the form of option premium. So hopefully at this point you're starting to see how delta hedging works, how, um, how dynamic hedging works, I guess, and how uh, how option traders uh, think about think about volatility and think about trading. So we're going to do another another video tomorrow, uh, which we'll just call volatility trading, um, where I'll try and even spell this out uh, uh, in a much more graphic and maybe simpler example. But hopefully, hopefully you guys understand this. Um, if you're interested in following along in the textbook. Uh, the textbook that we're using is called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives. Um, it's a textbook that I wrote uh, for, for this course and there's a link to it in the description below. And in one of my videos from I believe two days ago, I'll, I'll link to that, um, there is a way for you to win a copy of that textbook if, if you're interested. So anyhow, have a great day and I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Bye.